In this tutorial, I'd like to show you Retro TV from SquidFX. Retro TV reproduces vintage televisions with models from the 1950s through the 1980s. It also comes with customizable effects for adding a broadcast look without a TV. Additionally, Retro TV comes with five new background patterns specially designed to complement the televisions. Retro TV was designed exclusively for Final Cut Pro 10. You can find it in the Titles browser under SquidFX Retro TV. All of the TVs have a long shot, a medium shot, an extreme close up, and a lower third option. For my first example, I'm going to choose this model from the early 60s. When I drag it to my timeline, the clip below it appears on the screen. I can easily reframe the TV screen with on-screen controls. Use the inspector to change the size of the TV and its position on the screen. Because the television exists as a Final Cut Pro title on an independent track, you will want to extend the TV's duration to match the clip below it. You may also wish to extend the TV across multiple clips and create a slideshow. Here, I'm using a transition on the clips called Channel Switch, which happens to be available free when you download FX Factory. Build-in and build-off behaviors are available for every television. The default build-in option is to power on the TV. You can also slide the TV in from various directions or just fade it in. In this example, we are sliding the TV up into the shot while powering it on. The inspector also controls customizations that are specific to each set. For example, add a TV cart to this early 60s model, change the color of this late 80s portable, or dim the lights to simulate a darker room. The default background is a solid black fill. You can change the color of the background or select from one of the new retro TV patterns. These background patterns are also included as standalone generators for times when you need to use them without a television. The last section of the inspector deals with the look of your clip. You can start to dial it in with options like a vignette, saturation, or an extreme washout that imitates a worn out picture tube. But for an added level of realism, you should try the additional treatments, such as this bad reception filter, also found in the titles browser. Place it on the timeline between the clip and the TV to add a snowy static and rolling scan lines to your clip. Looking for something more extreme? Check out the static blast filter. It has a short default duration because it's intended to punch in and out briefly. Try combining that with the vertical roll filter. It simulates the vertical hold on an older TV and comes with three animation presets. And finally, the Retro TV Zoomer filter is a great new way to zoom in and out of clips. Unlike the Ken Burns effect, it can scale clips with a smooth start and finish. Make sure the end of the zoom filter lines up with the end of your clip. Since these filters are not locked to the TV duration, it's easy to adjust exactly when you want each one to come in. They're a great way to breathe life into still images. Now let's take a look at how you can use Retro TV to suggest a broadcast look without the TV. The effects browser has its own set of tools intended for exactly this purpose. Start with a customizable color wash. Follow that with some static from the bad reception effect, and then apply a soft rounded mask, which gives your clips a gentle bulge and creates a mask with variable height and width. Just as with the televisions, there are effects that imitate a TV powering on and off. Retro TV Switch On and Retro TV Turn Off each have three customizable animation styles. By combining the parts and pieces of Retro TV, you can create some very cool looks. Make a reference to decades long gone, or just enhance up here and now. Either way, Retro TV is a fantastic addition to your Final Cut Pro toolset.
FX Factory offers a huge selection of great effects, and if you don't have them yet, I suggest you go try them out at fxfactory.com.